Thank you for inviting us to uh, speak in this uh, wonderful conference. Congratulations to the uh, organizers. And guys, you take uh, a big risk to call IT people to, uh, to talk. So fast, <laughs> fasten your uh, belt, please. Uh, we're going to cross a lot of turbulence. <laughs> Just kidding. But it's not wrong. So let's go ahead. We're going to present you uh, my, my presentation. We'll take some insight talking about the infrastructure of stock exchange. Then I will take you to uh, some opportunities, maybe the uh, capital markets and, and uh, stock exchange, CSDs, CCP maybe should take uh, some um, benefit from some opportunities in technology to go beyond what is uh, our core mission. So I'm going to talk in one slide about our uh, market participations, then the infrastructure. Then I will go to the uh, make a brief focus on security based on what we lived last weekend. Then, as I mentioned, we'll go through uh, some opportunities. So market participants, like any other market, talking about the uh, regulator, then brokers, then CASD, central bank, custodians, uh, without forgetting the uh, market's data vendors. So that's the classical picture. Uh, we are doing business like any other market. So CSC IT infrastructure. So in terms of organization, all uh, CSC processes, our processes are uh, also business one. IT ones also are designed and compliant to ISO uh, 9001 for quality management system and also 27,001 for security and ISO 20,000 for IT operations uh, processes and, and procedures. So as to establish the basis of security, we'll get to this point as I mentioned later. So infrastructure is also supporting high availability. This is something critical and very important in our context. That means that all servers are redundant, but also uh, all the other equipment, talking about switches, uh, core switches, firewalls, etc., uh, etc. Et so everything is is a little bit redundant. For sure, it has an impact on budget, but this is done mainly to uh, afford enough availability. I mean, something like uh, talking uh, four nines, nine nine point nine nine availability. That means that over the year we have some minutes. Uh, uh, we can afford ourselves to, uh, yeah, for, for uh, um, yeah, cross fingers uh, incident or something like that. And we have SLAs with our brokers and also with uh, our software vendors. So, continuity of service is also compliant to ISO 22301, which is the uh, state of the art in terms of standard uh, for business continuity. That's something very, very important. So scalability is also a concern, and we have renewed our the whole infrastructure last year, and that was uh, addressed this way, uh, so as to uh, yeah to face uh, if any uh, any explosion in volume, that's the best we can face, uh, and we opted for a scalable infrastructure. So um, I wanted to. Uh, Present you that picture. That's our infrastructure core system. It's similar to any other uh, software you're running. Could be a NASDAQ one, Sinober one. So this one is Millennium IT uh, Software Exchange. That's one we're running in Casablanca Stock Exchange. For sure, it is. Uh, those uh, those people are very well known in in Africa since they are equipping, uh, uh, as far as I know, five six uh, uh, stock exchanges and also surveillance. I think uh, Egypt is equipped by this. Uh, but this software, surveillance uh, uh, from Millennium IT. So as you can notice, all those uh, lines in red, it means that the software is talking uh, to its external uh, partners. Could be the market data vendor. So uh, we have two main protocols, talking Mitch and FastFix. That's the way how we talk to uh, data vendors. Using also the uh, TWS, which is the uh, trader workstation and that belongs also to Millennium IT and we worked a lot with our brokers in Morocco to enhance it, improve it, make it 
uh, user-friendly and uh, yeah, we invested a lot in that stuff and finally every, everyone at the end of the project was happy and satisfied, I mean the brokers and also stock exchange. So uh, there's also a, a trading, uh, I mean solution, software that makes uh, bro that make brokers uh, yeah, satisfying their activities in terms of trading. So MaroClear is also uh, linked to our system. We choose to uh, move to fixed standard protocol. Uh, we're also linked to, uh, to the central bank. Uh, we're also using uh, the Millennium Surveillance. As I mentioned, Egypt is using the same. So Millennium sur Surveillance kind of uh, rule based system, uh, high, high level standard uh, in terms of surveillance and similar to uh, the smart one uh, yeah, sold by Nasdaq or, or the uh, Scylla uh, sold by um, Sinober. So the system is also talking to our uh, in-house applications, the applications we developed, uh, so as to, uh, to answer our in internal uh, users uh, needs uh, could be the uh, clearing or the business intelligence or uh, other uh, other um, business needs. So in terms of infrastructure, we have uh, two main data centers. The PDC is the primary data center, and it is uh, duplicated and uh, redundant with the, uh, the secondary data center. And as I mentioned, all the servers are redundant, and as uh, you see, you have two main uh, telecom lines. It means that we are on the synchronous hot uh, backup. It means that the orders and transactions um, put an, uh, an address to the primary uh, primary platform is duplicated on the secondary second, secondary uh, platform. So uh, we're also linked to the brokers, as, in, as you see, and also to the uh, uh, market data vendors, to our uh, regulator using the surveillance, and to MaroClear, the CASD. So brief, brief focus on uh, security based on what we lived last weekend. Um, my security team had a, a nightmare. They uh, spent the whole day and nights patching uh, servers and, and, and uh, uh, laptops and, and desktops and all the infrastructure. It means that that's something very, very important. And uh, nowadays, I think, uh, all those stuff, hacking, uh, security, we will we'll live with, with them. So we have to put, um, I mean, a, a proactive strategy uh, policy so as to uh, answer all those uh, uh, vulnerabilities and, and, and attacks and, and risk also. So supervision is also uh, very important. We are using a platform called Isinga, which is based on uh, Nagio system, which is a, an open source software, and the team developed uh, something, thousands of alerts, and we are uh, alerted um, by textos and emails, uh, day and night, starts of uh, day, end of day, and warnings, everything coming from the uh, uh, software issues, hardware issues, uh, telecom issues, uh, we're, we're, we're alerted and we could intervene in a um, very proactive manner uh, so as to, uh, uh, yeah, to be proactive and, and to afford and provide uh, a, a high uh, value added service to our uh, clients. So CM is the uh, system, it's kind of behavior analyzer that consolidates all logs mean antivirus routers and get out of the abnormal behavior or potential attacks. So all those uh, stuff form the uh, basis of our security and infrastructure uh, systems. Sorry. So security tools is just, I'm not going to go through all the uh, tools we are using. All these tools are used to, uh, in terms of availability confidentiality or compliance, we're using a lot of tools uh, that could and should answer our, uh, our concerns in terms of security and availability, this is just to share with you. Uh, and where there is our implementation and our um, deployment strategy is based on the, uh, mainly on the Gardner Quadrant. I think that you're familiar with with the Gardner, which is uh, an international state-of-the-art observatory. And when we want to uh, 
by our implemented solution. We go to the uh, magic quadrant to see what the garden is saying on that. So Gardner is uh, providing on it, each technology kind of uh, uh, quadrant with uh, four boxes, challengers, leaders, niche players, visionaries. So that's something that helps to address and, and to choose the uh, best, best of breed solution, software, uh, system, infrastructure to answer our um, needs, IT needs. So ISO 27. Thousand one. That's something very important. I think, uh, to my knowledge, we are three uh, stock exchanges in Africa, uh, complying to uh, and certified 27,001. Casablanca, Tunisia, and Nigeria are uh, uh, three stock exchanges uh, compliant and certified. CASD uh, Maroc Lear is also certified. And for those who are a uh, little bit familiar with 27,001, um, that's the uh, uh, state of the art in terms of policy security, how to build an uh, ICMS and I information security management system. And in front of you, uh, different phases we uh, uh, followed so as to uh, get to that uh, uh, grade, to that uh, big achievement. So, I will end it with this, uh, to explore some opportunities in our markets. I'm not going to throw uh, all the details on the slide, just to show you that we have a lot of information, could be uh, uh, stock exchanges or, or CASDs or uh, CCPs, we have a lot of information, I mean data, but unfortunately we are not choosing, we are not enveloping, we are not covering that data in a smart manner. Uh, so as to, uh, you know, uh, get to that knowledge stage, we're going to uh, see that uh, in, the, um, in the last uh, slide. So some opportunities maybe uh, to, uh, to explore in the, uh, yeah, between African stock exchanges or CASD, CCPs. So we have maybe uh, to be a little bit open to a fintech to open ourselves. Uh, to APIs just to provide also open data to the markets that will help uh, retail uh, trading, for example, to have uh, more opportunities, the way how to uh, consolidate, aggregate information and get to the markets. That's something very important. So we have also to open ourselves to a FinTech, that's important, and, and also uh, provide, op yeah, as I mentioned, uh, open data to the markets. Another subject also uh, interesting and important, I think that um, Mr. Horani will talk about it, talking about the blockchain. That's, that's something we don't have to fear, blockchain. That's a technology like any other technology, like internet. We're talking about that in the 90s. We were fearing internet, but now everyone now is using internet. Last year, I think, uh, um, United Nations declared that the uh, uh, getting and, and, and uh, having the access to internet is uh, a right. So uh, we have to go and explore what's in the uh, blockchain that, that could help. So I think that uh, we've been talking about very important and serious information since last year, yesterday. So let, let me end it with the uh, poetic uh, um, vision and, and, and picture. So I don't know if you know this guy talking about uh, Thomas Elliot, and the guy is ahead of his time. He was living in the uh, 40s, uh, 30s, 40s, and, and talking about uh, that paradigm of data, information, and knowledge. And, says at that time, that uh, small piece of his uh, poem called The Rock, where's the life we have lost in living, where's the wisdom we have lost in knowledge, and where's the knowledge we have lost in information. That small piece of that poem nowadays is a big pyramid. There are a lot of hundreds, thousands of researchers about that DIKW, data information, knowledge, and wisdom researchers. We are in the... Uh, stage and the level of data, token market data, for example. Yeah, some of, some of us are uh, enveloping that data to become an information and to help us to make a decision. Uh, not yet in the knowledge and in the wisdom. I think that it's a call 
uh, here I'm doing a call maybe for a collaboration that's between us, all those uh, partners may be gathered here, uh, meeting here uh, yesterday and, and today. Maybe we have to uh, think differently and get to the uh, uh, knowledge stage by covering the information, give it uh, an uh, added value and uh, providing, it to, uh, providing it to the uh, market, individuals, corporate firms, to uh, uh, enhance our, uh, I mean, uh, presence and, and, and uh, a stamp to, to the market and, and also help our economies to grow. Uh, that's all for me. Thank you for listening and I'm available for any question. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. I think before the questions, we'll have the second presentation. We'll keep um, Mr. Um, Mohammed up on the stage um, and maybe Mr. Asghar one if you'd go to do your presentation. Thank you very much. And I hadn't expected poetry and pyramids, but I think we've all been benefiting from that. Thank you very much for that. Um, let me hand over now to Mr. Azagruzi Ridwan from Maraklia. Okay, welcome everybody. As you see, uh, uh, IT guys can talk other things than technology. <laughs> and sometimes uh, it's very strange because uh, 20 years ago or 25 years ago, IT guys, no one asked him uh, compliance, standard, what you do. It was very simple. Just build networks, install servers, enable application, access to user. It is for IT perspective as a success story. As a success story. Today, this is just the half or less of the story because we are asking to be comply with with the international and national regulation we need to uh, implement standards and also one word is missing here we'll discover it on the presentation just let me uh, for those that don't know uh, maroclear just give an overview maroclear was the last step of the uh, market transformation that uh, Morocco initiated in 1993. And it was uh, established in 1997 and real uh, uh, first settlement on 1998. The shareholders are mainly uh, the state on 55% directly and indirectly through CDG and uh, Central Bank. The others are banks, insurance company, and 5% for the stock exchange. We are uh, under regulation of the, of the EMMC, the market authority, and also inside by uh, central bank as a payment system. So Maroclear is uh, like uh, every uh, CSD uh, across the world. Uh, but what is specific in Maroclear that we, uh, we success the dematerialization of all instruments in, uh, in Morocco. Those who are uh, by the law should be uh, admitted at CSD level with 100% scriptless. And uh, for the uh, uh, account structure, it was uh, just, uh, for own, for, for participant and omnibus for account. We don't have any details about the investors. We settle uh, on exchange uh, trades uh, as well as uh, OTC, repos, and uh, free of payment transfer. Uh, the settlement model is uh, BIS1, BIS1 for stock exchange, uh, for uh, OTC, and two for uh, stock exchange. That means uh, gross settlement for, uh, for uh, OTC and repo based on real time, the connection to the RTGS of Morocco. And uh, the model two is on exchange with uh, a model where securities are settled on gross uh, basis and uh, net for the cash. And we are also the national uh, uh, membrane agency. That means that Maroclear Mar gives the ICINs and other characteristics of the uh, instruments 
that issued in Morocco. <clears throat> Just on 2016, we, the capitalization has grown, and mainly now we have around 160 billion uh, CSD. That's more than GDP of Morocco because of uh, mutual funds that are composite of the other instruments. Now we will go to the, to, the, to the presentation that uh, I have for you. CSD, that means Central Security Depository. That's the business of Maroclear and all CSDs. But those three uh, letters are magic because it summarizes what is the things that we don't know about this market infrastructure. C is compliance. We should comply with all regulations, national and international, for the opportunities to go beyond the country. S is standard. You should adopt best practice, process automation, and STP. That's the, the, the ideal case of, for the uh, CSD. And the last one that we will discover, that missing in the, in the, in the, in the presentation earlier, is disruption. Sure that now we are more protected by the, the regulation, but tomorrow customer will decide where they will go through to the market. So we are in the intersection of the existing business model and unknown future. This future we should build it, otherwise will disappear. So for the compliance, I have chosen just uh, a famous principles of financial market and uh, infrastructure which is in uh, nine categories. The first one is general organization. That means the legal basis, uh, governance, and framework for risk management. The credit uh, and liquidity risk, because as you know, in the market infrastructure, we, uh, we are also uh, payment systems. So we need to make sure that we have collaterals guarantee for the settlement purpose. And the finality of settlement, then the exchange value of settlement system. That means that you need to be, uh, to give more uh, efficiency to, to the market, is that you need to introduce CCP, because ideally your settlement will be guaranteed when the two parties have the engagement to the market, and someone in the middle should take this risk, should materialize this risk at his level. Default management. In case of any, if there is any default, you need to have a rules procedure how we can cover it. And as all enterprise, you should have a general business and operational risk. Access efficiency and transparency. That's three are very important because when you are a market infrastructure, you have to deal with your participant. You should have a clear rules, clear procedure, and disclose those procedures and rules, at least key procedure for the market. So from that, uh, I will go to the one guidance that has been uh, raised by EU school and uh, bank for uh, international settlements, uh, settlements, that's it. And it is based on key uh, 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 principle of PFMI. And this provides supplementary details related to preparation and measure that FMIs should undertake to enhance their cyber resilience. Because today, cyber resilience is something that we need to take into consideration. Why? Because of, as you see, there is a dynamic nature of cyber threats. We need to, every time, enhance what we do. There is no limit for 
the enhancement. We need to have a strong information and communication control on environments. We are inter interconnected with our business partner, so we multiply the risk to be attacked. And what is very dangerous, that cyber attacks becomes more and more sophisticated. So what we do and what we can uh, prevent, sometimes we are not able to do it. And if you look to the last cyber, cyber attack this weekend, last weekend, those people who have been attacked, they have security management. They have all things for to be protected for the virus. Unfortunately, it's not a virus. The behavior is not a virus, cannot be detected. And then our services is done. Okay, so, so for the principle of this uh, guidance, there is one center and very important part is the governance, because you should have a management of the cyber security at all level, at the board level, at the executive level, and also all staff should be trained and awareness should be there. At least the recommendation is to have in the board one who has skills on cyber uh, resilience and also in the executive to have someone who can implement, who can be the accountable for the cyber resilience. Identification, because we cannot protect something that we don't know. So business pro functions, process, information asset, and we need to do it regularly because information is changing. The sensitive of the information can change in one hour, one day, one week. So we need to do the update and the review. Protection. You should have an effective security control and process that three things should be uh, protected. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the assets. So it means that your service will be available. Detection. You know, on the detection, we cannot detect uh, what, 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 whatever uh, is there in the internet or the, the network. So you should focus on what is identified as a sensitive information, because it costs to build a detection system in our area. Response and recovery. You should have incident response. And in case of uh, 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 market infrastructure, the principle uh, 23 or 24 say that we need to have contingency plan, the response incident, all these things to have an RTU of two hours, no more. So that's a big challenge for us. And uh, last one is crisis uh, communication. It is very important to communicate when you are in the crisis, because as we are in the center of the, of the market, you need to communicate, because others are waiting for you. Other processes are pending, because you are not available, your service is not available. So that the contingency procedure is not like uh, stock exchange has, has one, Maroclear has one, CST has one, banks has one, RTGS. We need to have one contingency plan across the country, because if one of the actors are not here, systemic risk is just propagating in the in the in the market so for the uh, for the last three uh, three components of this uh, guidance is testing because we need to test what we have without test we cannot have awareness of 
our team, our staff, but also to challenge the technology every time. Threat intelligence process. We should be able to, to be in the pro proactive situation, not in the action because we have a threat or we have an attack. And also lessons from cyber events so that we can predict what happens. Last uh, cyber attack this uh, last weekend, uh, it was predictable somehow because of those guys have announced that they found one treat on the Windows servers, Windows XP's, and, and they put this force money. Who will take it? No one give offers. So they put this ransom to prove that they are right. Sometimes you should be hearing what happens in your <laughs> ecosystem, and that's very important. So for the standards, <coughs> mainly uh, uh, there is two standards in the post trade. One is 15.022 and 20.022. The difference is one, just the text, and another one is XML, and with large, uh, uh, it covers large uh, uh, business on the security and payment system. Now 2020-022 is covering even cards and ATMs. So 15-022 uh, comes around uh, 1993 or 92, uh, and the first time we have a standards with Central Data Field Dictionary for Development, a catalog of message, and the first time also linkage between the message and the business process. But it cost, because of how it is built, it cost in case of change of the message on the syntax. Something is wrong. Okay. So I said uh, cost is very uh, important in case of change of the syntax and less flexibility in the usage of the tag and also data formatting. Then comes ISO 20022 with more versatile and less field tied to specific format, a method to develop well-structured financial message and unifies the many existing standards like X, XBRL and uh, ETM uh, for cards uh, proper. The advantage is that we can reuse the components in the development perspective because it is based on the XML syntax for flexible usage possible to reverse engineering because when you are in XML, you can read the message and within the message you have the structure and you have the description of the field. So anyone with minimum skills for Excel, for example, can read a, a, a payment message or security message from the network. That reduces also the, the cost in case of future stone tax, because developers, uh, especially in Java, they are based, the building, development building is built on XML and the Java, so they are something friendly to them. So any change can be taken quickly. So ISO 20 is, is coming very fast as uh, many of uh, CSDs have gone to this uh, 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 standards and also it, it should go more fast because T2S is based on ISO 20022 messaging. 
So all depositories and pan-Europeans should have communication interfaces with ISO 2002. So I will, I will get, go uh, faster than that. So disruption, should we fear it or embrace it? Anyway, it is happening. So, uh, as uh, Saad say, uh, 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 there is a, a, a conference this afternoon about this, and it will be very interesting, I'm sure. So, uh, what is our position on this uh, new technologies? Is that we need to be on the frontier between the physical world and the virtual world. So. That's only, uh, I think, in my opinion, that's the only way to catch the market for that uh, 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 new technologies. It gives a lot of opportunity of innovation, mutual consensus of verification. So reconciliation can be done only by notes. Amazing. Now to do conciliation, uh, consolation, you need to go for a lot of reports from CSD, from custodian, uh, at the investor level. Uh, the second opportunity is a smart uh, contract. With smart contract, a lot of, I'm um, just thinking, a lot of uh, processes can be, uh, can be um, more efficient. Like uh, today, uh, the registrar uh, management. When you do uh, a transactional registered IC instrument, you need also to update the registry of the issuer. So I can do the transaction with smart contract because it's contract between two uh, two uh, two actor in the in the market, and then from that. I can update my registry on the, on the issue. So, opportunity for, mar for capital market, it's more efficient uh, settlement. And one uh, very important point is that with uh, blockchain, for example, messaging in is integrated. No more need Swift because the block itself is the message. Amazing. So, in my opinion, we should, in the market infrastructure, take action today, perhaps yesterday, because this is happening and we need to act to forge new role, perhaps, but at least new path for our future. Thank you very much. We've got a few minutes now for questions from the floor. Thank you very much for that really interesting overview also. Um, thank you. What I was wondering, maybe I could just start with the first question. After the weekend, do you, do, would you advise um, people running stock exchanges, people investing in stock exchanges, should they feel safe? Or has the world changed a lot? Uh, how, how able you are central depositories, stock exchanges, financial markets, infrastructure? able to deal with the sort of emerging threats? Because it seems all the time in newspapers we see threats all the time. You know, how do you feel about it? I think that, yeah, we lived um, a dark weekend and it's, it won't be the, uh, you know, neither the first nor the last weekend we're going to live something like that. I think that we all have cars in this uh, in this uh, room and uh, there are uh, thousands of accidents each year on the, uh, uh, yeah, so, but it will never prevent us to take a car. So we have to put the uh, right rules and, and uh, standards as uh, Erdogan says, the uh, right rules the, uh, to train people because people, uh, as it was mentioned many, many times in, in many surveys, this is, the weakest link in the chain, that's, that's man. That's the man who uh, uh, clicks on the uh, email coming from an unknown uh, 
uh, an unknown guy that makes that his uh, computer was uh, infected by the ransomware or by a virus or something like that. So could be ISO 27001 or any standard, it will never uh, prevent and eradicate uh, in 100% uh, a ransomware or a virus on an attack or uh, any, anything uh, that could harm a, a business. So we have to be aware of that. It's, it's you know, part of the business, part of the society. Even at home, we have our laptops and each time you have to reinstall, I don't know, Windows or any, all those stuff. That's because it is infected. That's because we are surfing on the internet and we have a lot of you know, bad, uh, bad stuff uh, 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 sticking to, uh, to our uh, computers or to infrastructure. So I have to, to be aware of that, to take it, as it was mentioned, at the top of the uh, management, uh, to set a security board and, you know, to face all those stuff and put the right roles, uh, standards, policies, procedures, and uh, be uh, very sharp on that. Uh, in a continuous manner, you know, uh, in each day, we have to train people, we have to put the right roles and, and so on. Everything has, yeah. Everything has been said. Okay, I just add one thing, very important, because sometimes we are talking about governance, procedures, rules, um, and sometimes uh, the uh, situational uh, awareness is very important, like we have done with uh, OZIM, with uh, CLISIM, a lot of mailing lists that uh, uh, permit us to have information in the right time. And then everyone, I think, has a mailing list internally that you can inform, you can advise what should be done in the right time. because. You can have procedures, you can have uh, anything you, you can imagine, firewalls, antivirus, etc. If the attacks happen at midnight on the weekend, no one will be, uh, will be uh, aware about that if you don't have the information earlier, as earlier as possible. That's Thank you. Let me let me something. That, that's very important, what was uh, Ardwan addressed. That's because in Early morning on Saturday, because we have many forums on WhatsApp, we are linked to, uh, uh, you know, hundreds of uh, IT, uh, IT managers, and we got the solution. You know, early morning on Saturday, and we start thinking our uh, team to go to the office and start blocking some uh, IP addresses and push the right patches. I think that I think that's that's the most important, just to face all those vulnerabilities and risk is uh, to, uh, you know, uh, form and, and constitute the block. The block is, uh, as Erdogan mentioned, associations. We have the, uh, uh, both of us are in the uh, IT uh, managers associations, but also the security uh, CISO, uh, so the uh, uh, information security officer association, and all those people could face together, could face all those vulnerabilities. Just to mention maybe, we are also uh, uh, forming a Pan-African association of the uh, uh, IT managers, and that's something that could help uh, to face, uh, you know, all those, all those uh, uh, risks, attacks, and vulnerabilities, and that's very important. Let, let me not dominate too much, but turn it over to the floor. It would be very interesting to get the questions. I think we've got some amazing people with roving mics ready to come. We've got a question at the front here. Um, and, you know, I'd really like the audience to be sharing their experiences from their different exchanges and also um, to be sort of asking questions, but also feel free to make any comments from your own perspective. Thank you. So what is positive that you are still uh, alive after the two uh, presentations, and that's a good thing. <laughs> Please introduce yourself, Oscar. Okay, uh, my name is Oscar Onyema from the Nigerian Stock Exchange. <clears throat> Thank you very much, guys, for very uh, interesting presentations. Um, as you rightly noted, you operate in an ecosystem, um, and therefore the weakest, the weakest link um, is um, where the vulnerability is. Um, somebody once said that there are two types of companies, those that know they've been hacked and those that don't know it yet. 
So how should African exchanges be thinking about these issues? And should we, on the ASEA level, be coming up with some type of working group uh, for African exchanges to adopt certain minimum standards uh, with regards to how they interact with the ecosystem? I think that uh, I think that there is two levels. The first level should be done at the country, and then at the regional and international. That's me. That uh, in the building security system or cyber resilience system or globally, you should uh, uh, I think uh, go in. Not slowly, but step by step. First of all, identify what you have. And one of the things that I have uh, uh, said in my presentation is links. When you don't have links, you are fast. You cannot aware about your relationship. If you have links, then you should go from your core business and see your ecosystem and your country then regional and international. And I think for that, uh, there is, for example, in Morocco, we are working with Central Bank, with Stock Exchange, with uh, uh, Banks Association, etc., to build one contingency plan for the country. Once we we'll finish that, perhaps we'll see what links that we have outside Morocco, and then we can build uh, a, a contingency plan for that. Contingency plan, when I say contingency plan, it's not always thinking technology. can also be business. You know, uh, uh, Ericsson has been uh, failed and uh, because of one thing, very simple. They didn't diversify the producer of the mic. That's it. Just it was uh, there was a fire in one uh, big uh, manufacturer of uh, some electronic component. They stop for one week and they fire. Sony take over the Ericsson, and now it doesn't exist as a company. So you should uh, uh, have a approach, a progressive approach, and I think that uh, through our. Uh, Associations, as you know, in CSD we have AMIDA as association, so uh, African and Middle East, and we talk a lot about those uh, 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 those issues. I think also uh, throughout Asia, uh, uh, it's time to have at least a, a, a group or workshop on those uh, specific topics. Uh, thank Another you. question or observation? Sorry, do you want to add something? Thank you, Mr. President, to uh, ask such a question. It's very important. I think that there's only one thing that could be enriched when we share it, that's information. And I think that, uh, yeah, we people in Morocco could be the uh, IT uh, uh, users uh, association or the security uh, uh, users association who are willing to share with uh, our partners in Africa could be under the umbrella of Asia or uh, any any uh, any other uh, uh, governance uh, institution. Well, we're here to share. Um, I think that nowadays sharing information is very easy. It could be on WhatsApp, on Slack, or towards a website or uh, any with any means. The means uh, doesn't mean anything, but, but we're, we're willing to share information, studies, experience. That's what we're doing, for example, in, uh, in our association uh, four or five years, four or five months ago, we invited uh, four or five companies that went through the uh, ISO 27001 certification, and we told them to share the experience, how they get there. And that was very important instead of calling a consultant to, uh, you know, uh, to uh, uh, present the bulk of information and to put a dollar sign uh, next to it. We called people that who lived the experience to get uh, certified and they share with people. And that was very, very, very um, 
interesting. So we're willing to share any information, any studies, any uh, uh, return experience, and that's that's uh, a call I I, uh, I want to declare here. Thank you. More questions from the floor, or any comments or observations from your own regional experiences? I've I've got another. We got a question. I'm missing no. I've got another question. As IT managers, you know, some of the stock exchanges and securities markets are talking about regional integration. What would, you know, what's your reactions when you're looking at that? How would you advise them to start looking at the issues? What are people missing when they're building the regional integration system, both from the point of view of the stock exchange and obviously linking into the brokers and so on, and also from the clearing and settlement? Maybe you'd like to start first, Mahmoud. In two words, um, I think that technical issues have never been an, uh, you know, an obstacle towards uh, uh, going on in business. I think regulations is more regulation uh, is more critical than than technical stuff. So uh, today uh, we're gonna invent nothing. It was done. I think BRVM is a mutualized, uh, you know, stock exchange, and have a lot many experiences in Europe, in Latin America, uh, in Asia, etc. So so. Yeah, I don't think that that uh, uh, the technical issues is uh, really uh, something that could um, stop such uh, big, uh, uh, you know, uh, collaboration opportunities. I think, in addition, uh, today uh, technology is not uh, an issue; it's not a barrier because uh, uh, information system can talk each other each other because of standards messaging and also uh, mainly uh, all CSDs at least on the post uh, post trade uh, processes they work on the standardization they work on the adoption of best practice so uh, I think uh, uh, for the market integration it's more about uh, more about the, the, the culture more about uh, uh, regulation barriers uh, because, as you know, countries have developed a protection of their economy. So those barriers, if we want to have a full integration of our market, we should perhaps in first step harmonize our regulation. The second step is to work on the opportunities in uh, 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 each uh, uh, respective uh, markets, but at any stage, technology will not be uh, an issue for this integration. A question here in the middle. Mark Welder from Cognizance. Thank you again. Uh, your last sentence is very important. Technology is not the issue, uh, which brings me to the question, which is a bit of a harsh one, but should you think that the organizations that you represent Oh, I'm on a very big screen there. Hey, it's me. Sorry. Um, I've got to laugh sometimes. Um, gosh, now I forgot my sentence. No. Shouldn't we try to concentrate on, on the actual work that needs to be done and less on the technology? In the other words, outsource, manage services, uh, things like that. And then concentrate on what you, what you are discussing, like harmonization, working together, trying to create the right kind of environment. Obviously, I'm doing this very clearly because this is what, what we do. Uh, we do this very successfully around the world. But I'd like to see your input into what you think the impact is for you and whether that's something that even your organizations here in the Maghreb, maybe in Morocco or even in Africa, uh, would lean towards. Thank you. OK. Uh, just in, uh, in one word. Uh, CSD is not supposed to do business. CSD is uh, supposed to give the infrastructure that the market player can take this opportunity and develop the business. When I say that technology is not an issue, because market infrastructure is like an IT provider. We are just building infrastructure for the custodian, for brokers, to do their business, that's it. We are not supposed to do, but anyway, we are uh, uh, appointed, we are uh, really very active in all uh, uh, groups 
technical groups, uh, regulation groups that uh, are uh, created to make this integration in Africa happening. I think everything is said. Uh, but yeah, just, just to say that maybe uh, we uh, technical people, we have also to uh, enhance the way uh, things should be done. IT operations and stuff should be done. Talking about virtualization, data centers, management, talking about operations, outsourcing, not outsourcing, uh, software as a service, etc., etc. So the way I was dealing and managing when I uh, when I was also a CIO in the 90s is not the way now I'm doing business. The data center, is this my business to manage a data center? I don't know. I have uh, more to do uh, to uh, answer my business because there are a lot of people uh, uh, with more, more expertise, uh, with more, mass, more mastering, you know, data center. Uh, management with a lot of, uh, you know, I, I could never reach those people talking about uh, many, uh, many data center uh, managers. I could n never reach that, that uh, level of uh, uh, expertise, neither budget. Today we're talking about um, 10,000 euros uh, a square meter when I want to build my data center. So, uh, should be uh, should be totally uh, lunatic to uh, uh, push my management to uh, invest such a uh, big budget uh, in a data center uh, implementation or, or building. So that's that's the same about virtualization of software as a service. I'm not going to invent the world and push my developers to uh, reinvent the wheel. Since there are a lot of people doing that, it could be an application on the cloud or uh, anywhere, and and pay as you go. That's the uh, that's, I think, today's uh, new vision of the win uh, business, uh, but from the IT, uh, IT picture, and that's what we are pushing in the association to make those people uh, have their, you know, way of doing IT, managing IT, leading IT should change the picture. I'm very happy that we have at least one stockbroker in the room, and I was wondering, on your chart with the red lines, you had the Millennium Trading System talking to the stockbrokers, and I remember when in Namibia we were bringing in the, we looked, hooked up to the JSC system and we had to get the stockbrokers in, and they were grumbling like mad about the expense and so on. How do you find bringing market participants into the system? Is it difficult? Do they see the values? Do they complain about the expense and the unnecessary, you know? Well, the market isn't just the stock exchange, it's all the other participants. How do you overcome that? We face that, uh, I think that we have some um, brokers in the room. I think that's, that's a big question, uh, indeed, because we have changed, for example, we in Casablanca Stock Exchange, we were owned by the brokers, and we changed our governance change last, uh, last year, and, and uh, when we were implementing the uh, software, we were facing that question of uh, people say, hey, we are living a, a very... Uh, 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 critical situations, especially nowadays, you know, still we are living the crisis of 2008, and uh, investing in, uh, in high caliber uh, solutions that, that would cost a lot is not the best time, but, but we are uh, investing and building for the future, and for sure that's the, uh, that's the uh, production uh, uh, tool, and we are, they are obliged to go to go, uh, you know, and, and, and build, you know, uh, the appropriate system so as to uh, not have the choice. That's and, and with the CSDs, do you find that it's expensive for participants? People have to drop out as you upgrade. Um, you know, uh, every time technology transformation is very difficult to to achieve, and. Uh, uh, from the CSD perspective, we have been convinced in 2006 that if we uh, uh, would be uh, a market infrastructure for the uh, 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 for the for our market to be developed, we should make efforts on this transformation. So, from this time, 
we have a, a, a long-term strategy with uh, several uh, uh, topics that we need to achieve. First of all is best practice, is to move the market, not a technology, just how we deal with operations, with different markets, etc., and make procedures. Second was to uh, build the technology that can achieve that goal. And after that, we are working on the value-added services. As I said, we are not supposed to do business, but we need to get service ready for our business partner. Cost is there, but sometimes on the strategy, we don't just thinking about expense. Sometimes we are thinking about position, and that's very important in the case of uh, market infrastructure. I remember the stockbrokers in Namibia accusing me of not just moving to the cutting edge, but to the bleeding edge as far as their budgets were concerned. But then 15 years later, they voted to continue the same process indefinitely. So I think in the long term, we were right. We've got a couple of questions here in the floor. Have we got the microphone? Sorry, the lady first. Hi, uh, good morning all. Thank you for this um, presentation, which is uh, very interesting. Uh, I'm from BCP, uh, the group, um, from Media Finance, which is the first uh, depository bank in Morocco now. And my question is, uh, Morocco Clear as a CSD has a very sophisticated platform of IT. Uh, we know also that uh, many other depositories are linked to uh, Maroclear. How can we involve the other depositories to enjoy um, or to have a sophisticated platform in order to, to make uh, the market? Uh, because if there is a problem about uh, one or two depositories, the problem will be general about all the, all the platforms. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, if you talk about... Uh, Depositories as a business partner of Maroclia and the local market. Uh, yes, we can think about mutualization of, of, the, of, the, of the IT infrastructure, especially software that used on the back office. But the problem is, when you do that, you create a point of failure. More you have diversification, more you are more uh, resilient. But as I mentioned in my presentation, it's not the technology which is uh, important, but you need to build the standards. I think what we, uh, we try in uh, Maroclia is to create oh, from the global ISO uh, uh, rules and procedures messaging a Moroccan market practice to use this messaging. After that, any IT, you can build an IT system, but when you are able to communicate with the other system across the markets, that's sufficient. And also when you build an IT system based on the standards, any change in the market practice, you can take it easily. The cost is reduced. Yes, in the first step, when you want to build this system, it costs a lot, but on the long term, it can be amortized because of you can take opportunity of any change on the market practices. Um, we're running out of time, so I'll limit you to one question rather than three questions if possible. Please hand over the microphone. Yeah. Okay, one, one question, one single question here. Yeah. Um, actually, it will be very concrete, uh, less technical. Uh, so we know that um, in Morocco, so it's Morocco specific, so in Morocco we're switching to a float uh, quotation um, uh, system of our uh, exchange rate. Uh, so uh, is there going to be an overhaul uh, on the IT side accompanying this, uh, this huge change in terms of like um, options clearing, uh, FX compression, or maybe uh, in the near future hopefully uh, knitting um, so, concretely, are there any, is there any overhaul in, in the way you're doing things to accompany, to take full advantage of this uh, future change? Thank you. 
Well, maybe in two words, I think. Two words, I think, that uh, Maoklia upgraded their system uh, 2010. That's it. We did the same last year. Now we have, uh, I think, a state of the art system. Uh, we're using the same software used by uh, London Stock Exchange, Millennium IT Exchange system, and uh, it is, as it was mentioned, multi uh, products, multi currency. We could we could uh, tomorrow, you know, um, create new products, could be derivatives or uh, bonds or any other uh, products. And I think that we are really just waiting for regulation, the market to be uh, ready, uh, to be trained also. And uh, yeah, but as it was mentioned, technology is never, uh, you know, an obstacle for, for doing business. In addition, uh, at the CSD level also, uh, in our strategy, we, uh, we have uh, a product with license uh, for any, uh, for any uh, change that comes, like uh, settlement in uh, multi-currency, like a new instrument that we don't have, derivatives, uh, because of, as you know, in derivatives there is also OTC derivatives that should go through uh, OCSD. So maybe uh, more than what we said about standards, we are also in IT thinking about what would be the evolution of our market. So we, uh, both of us, are thinking about to have a wide uh, uh, and large services in our IT uh, software and the region. So thank, we've had two very brave men facing the future with smiles and confidence, which is very reassuring for the rest of us, I think. And congratulations, they've done a great job, particularly making IT very lively. I very much enjoyed the poem and the pyramid, and I'm hoping we're heading up there towards the um, knowledge and even to the wisdom and the spirit of a debate like this will really help us get there, and also for bringing us in with that missing D and the disruption and making us think about what's coming next because that's part of the discussion on panels like this. So a warm round of applause for our two panelists. Thank you very much. <laughs>